we aren't one with the light. We are the light. We are the light. And darkness isn't bad. It's not the opposite of light. Light is just information. When we mm-hmm. turn on the light, like you said in your your forward, we mm-hmm. can see. Yeah. When we turn off light and we're in the dark, we can't see. Right. We're in a state of um, you know ignorance. We don't know the truth, the truth, the power right. of right. our own light in that state. And when we ignore it, it's when it becomes dangerous. Right. But if you learn or to suppress it, or suppress it, or try to drink it away, yeah, or, or whatever. throw it away, just yeah, yeah. rip it up yeah. and throw yeah, it in yeah, the yeah. river, right? And when we really learn to love our darkness, it sets us free. Peace and riches, blessings. I am Michael B. Beck with the host of Take Back Your Mind. Peace and riches, blessings, everyone. I'm Michael Beck with, as you know, host of the podcast, Take Back Your Mind. At this precise moment, I have with me Jessica Swag. Swag. <laughs> Swag? Swag. Swag. You got it. Yes. So we're going to be together having a, a beautiful conversation. If you don't know who she is, let me give you just a little bit of understanding. And you know what I like? I mentioned a lot of times that the people I have on my, my program and we am in conversation with, I actually know them. You know, most, I would say 90%, maybe even 95% of the people that come on here, they're actually my friends. I actually talk to them. We actually have a relationship. We do things together. And Jessica is one of those people. Mm. Now, for the formal stuff, she's been described as a voice of her time, which is our time, by Marianne Williamson. She's a personal branding expert. By Forbes, one of the top 10 entrepreneurs to follow according to the Chicago Tribune. A social entrepreneur, she founded three businesses and recently sold her agency, Simply Be, the nation's premier personal branding company and one of the 5,000 fastest companies in America. Now, her first book was the number one bestseller, Be a No Bullshit Guide <laughs> to Increasing Your Self-Worth and Your Net Worth by Simply Being Yourself. Now, if you don't know, where the word shit comes from. It means stacked high in transport. That's where the word comes from. It was, a, it was a shipping term. So don't think we're doing profanity here. The only thing that's profane in this world is war and ripping up the rainforest mm. and polluting the oceans. That's profane. Mm. Words, it depends on how you use them. And so that was a great book. Now, her forthcoming book, it's gonna be out soon, The Light Work. Reclaim your feminine power, live your cosmic truth, illuminate the world. It hits the shelves. Check this out. August this year, 2024, with St. Martin's Press. I happen to write the foreword. So I put my name on. It's, it's a great book. And she's host of her own top-ranked podcast, The Spiritual Hustler, sought-after speaker for companies like Google, Pinterest, Motorola, Salesforce, Discover, Heineken, Nike. She's a leader of a global community of women and hosts sold out retreats on business, branding, and spirituality across the world. Welcome. Oh, it's so good to be with you, Michael. I'm so glad. I'm honored. We get to hang out. It's and the talk. best. Hanging out with you is one of my favorite things to do. That's right. I, I love you so much. Listen, the light work. Yeah. Break down a little bit about the mm. process of writing this book. What motivated you? Mm. What did you go through to write it? That, that, that covers right here. Mm. Yeah. No, thank you. So after my first book, I mean, you've written many books. I love being an author. Yeah. I love writing. It's my creative art. You know, I'm a businesswoman on paper, but I really truly consider myself an artist and writing is my, my craft. And so after my first book, B, it did so well. I, I loved the experience of launching a book. There was some real uh, darkness that came with that yeah. experience, however. I really hustled, yeah. burnt out, um, mm. went through a pretty dark period of just sheer burnout and, and diagnosed with situational depression. I just went through a, a hard couple of months to a year back in 22. And I had this idea to write a second book in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. And I knew I wanted it to have the word light in it. Mm-hmm. 
because you had gone through the darkness. Yeah, but I hadn't fully transmuted it and, yeah. and come out on the other side. That that word was just on my soul. And I, I wanted to teach women, people about the concept of light, but the, the concept of the book wasn't fully baked yet. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I started the book proposal, hit the burnout and depression, and put it on the shelf. And really was just running my agency, dealing with the day-to-day the -day demands of being an entrepreneur of a very you know successful company, which you're familiar with. And at the end of that year, this was in 22, the proposal was on the shelf in my mind. I had put it down, and I went to Egypt. Mm. That's it, transformational in and of itself. That trip blew up my life. Yeah. And I say that in the best way. Yeah. I went there, and I died. Yeah. And the person that came on that plane with me, that woman that got on the flight to Cairo at the beginning of November 2022, did not come home with me. Yes. And when I got back, I'm like, now I know, now I know what this book really has to say. It was still in pro proposal form. My agent helped me pitch it to a couple publishers. St. Martin's Press just got it. Because I was mm. unapologetic in rewriting it. I was very open about my spiritual beliefs. I almost feel like this is a, I've always been spiritual. I identify more as a spiritual person than, than a human being. Right, right. But it's really me coming out of the closet spiritually and sharing with the world like my beliefs in you know the codes of the Pleiadians and what I got in Egypt and all of the messages from the goddesses and the galactic portal of being in the great pyramid and what yes. I got and so that book once I got the book deal you know you've written books before typically you need 6 to 9 to 12 months to really be with a book I wrote this book in 3 months wow it channeled through me it yeah, came a from birth. a higher it was a birthing yeah. and I I read it back now because it's about to hit the shelves. I'm like, I wrote this, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I understand. It, you understand that I understand feeling. That. Yeah. And so I really have such a deep desire for this book to be read by as many people as possible because I feel like it's gonna help them see their own light. And we live in a dark, unfortunately, dark time. Or it, it, yeah. in many ways, we do. Yeah, it, it's a very intense time. Yes, it is. In which there's a clashing. There is between that which is seeking to be born, yeah. is how I describe it, and that which is dying. And then that which yes. is dying is very loud. Yes. Because when uh, something dies, yeah. it makes the loudest noise on its deathbed. But we're right in the middle of that. I, I could not agree with that more. I feel like because there is such a beautiful mass awakening yeah. of consciousness on this planet at this time more than ever before, I feel like the dark, could say that it was winning right. maybe a couple decades ago. Right. But the light is winning now. Yes. Which is why the dark is slashing back so hard. So hard. You know, you go back 30 years ago, maybe not you, but. <laughs> I was around then. <laughs> 40 years ago, the, um, a lot of what we're talking about, a lot of what you're talking about in the book would be woo woo. Yeah. You know, people would Absolutely. look at you like you're weird. Uh huh. But now there's millions of people, as you say, that are waking up now, yeah. that are beginning to see that there's something beyond the veil, something beyond what you can touch and smell, beyond the five senses, that's real, yes. more real than this. Yes. And so your book is coming out at the right time to help give an articulation yes. to what people are feeling intuitively. Correct. You know, so that they don't get caught in the morass of the death throes mm -hmm. of an old paradigm. Mm -hmm. So, so what what would you say are some of the main themes mm. of the book? Because so, you mentioned some words in there, Palladians. You uh -huh, mentioned, yeah. You, you mentioned, <laughs> you know, a death in Egypt, yep, yep. which is which is why I don't have any hair. <laughs> I know, yeah, you shaved it in Egypt. You yeah, told me the story. I, I went to Egypt and, and I the, had a rebirth. The dreadlocks were gone, and I was going to cut them off in the Great Pyramid, but it was too dark. Yeah. So I just, as soon as I hit yeah. the United States, the day I got back, I went and cut off and just began anew. And it's never grew my hair back. Yeah, yeah. and you look good. Thank you. Both ways. <laughs> I, that that country has that effect yeah. on you. It will do. It'll do powerful things to you, whether you want it to or not. Right. So the themes of the book, you know, I'll start with the Palladians. Yes. Because people are perking up. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> some people are asking, "What is that?" Yeah. And some people are saying, "Are you really going to talk about this?" Yeah. <laughs> no. And I, I, I am pretty unapologetic about it. You know, right. I read. You know, I, I was connected since I was a little girl, yeah. you know, whether I realized or had words for it. I, I was talking, I was journaling and writing poetry about white light and the goddess when I was 12. Wow. 
and you know went on a very deep spiritual journey at, a, at an early age and sort of tried on all these different modalities and explored many different faiths and cultures and sort of really adopted my own belief system because I do believe your relationship with spirit is the most personal relationship mm -hmm. in your life and, mm -hmm. and no doctrine or person or entity or organization should really tell you what that is. Mm -hmm. And so I really, and I talk about this extensively in the book, kind of started to formulate that myself. But then around 2014, 13, mm -hmm. many years ago, I found this book called Bringers of the Dawn mm -hmm. by Barbara Marciniak. And I read that book, Michael, and I just got it. Mm. I just was like, this is the truth. This is everything that I have always believed to be true, but could never articulate. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm a pretty connected human being. Like I, I clear audience, I can, you know, can commune with spirit. I would say I'm less of a channel for the Pleiadians and more of a translator. Mm. What's the difference? I don't really talk to them. They mm -hmm. don't come through me in alien okay. form, right? I, I, I have had moments where I've touched them. I've been in spaces with them. But looking at the, the texts that are already out there, which mm -hmm. are pretty dense and mm -hmm. altruistic and a little less mainstream than I think, you know, much of the spiritual content many people are consuming today or are starting to more, I'm able to decipher the essence of their messages and how it applies to how we treat our bodies, how we are in relationship, how we manifest money, mm -hmm. how we treat the earth. Mm -hmm. And so I took these codes from the Palladians, and I really disseminated them through the book as a through line. Even though I touch upon them, I quote her a little bit, I quote other books, but it's really a manifesto, a journey of resource guide and how to become a light worker today mm -hmm. from the inside out mm -hmm. and how that impacts the future. Mm -hmm. Whether we have children or not, I don't. I mm -hmm. have you know nieces, nephews, dogs, dogs. lots of friends with <laughs> right. kids, right, right. but we are so responsible right now and needed for co-creating what the future generations and the generations after that are going to inherit. So it starts with us internally. Yes. Right? And so that's the first section of the book. It's called Inner Light. Mm -hmm. And really breaking down how we relate to spirit, creating our own relationships, as I was saying earlier, how we really connect with our emotions. Because as the Palladians say, that's our superpower. That's the key to unlock the library, mm -hmm. that we have this full spectrum of emotions from mm -hmm deep rage to unabashed joy and we shouldn't tamp, damper it or shame ourselves or repress any mm -hmm, of it. It's, mm -hmm. our, it's our super highway to quantum consciousness, our mm -hmm, feeling. Mm -hmm. I, talk, I talk about body as our sacred vessel. You know, so many women, at least in my sphere, are talking about wellness and holistic health and how to, you know, calm our nervous systems and drink more minerals or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. And I kind of throw all that out the window. That's really mm -hmm. not what I'm here to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm here to talk about how our bodies are sacred technology. Yes. That our DNA is encoded with light encoded filaments. Yes. And there's ways we can turn that up and turn that on that make us true quantum self-generated healers of our own yes. life and, right. and physical bodies as much as our emotional and mental state. I talk about personal power, which you inspired. Mm. Life visioning. Life mm. isn't happening to me. Right. Life is happening for me. Yes. With me as me. Right. And really giving my book is really geared towards women, mm -hmm. um, but anyone can read it. But really laying down the victimhood that women face around mm -hmm. their lives mm -hmm. and claiming radical responsibility mm -hmm. for their one precious life and that all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, right. the magnificent, it's all up to you, babe. Right. And so that's the first section of the book. Right. So in writing this book, you had to go through changes. I sure did. You know, because you can't—you weren't writing just from the intellect. No. Your whole being was writing. Absolutely. So what, what did you learn mm. writing this material mm. or letting it come through you? You know, it's really funny that you say that because I have been studying these spiritual modalities and, and really being the student. And, you know, here I am stepping out in this book, and I, I know that I'm a teacher of this work in my own lane. and. I've taught many women in my community and I'm you know, very much grateful for that, that, that I'm looked upon as a teacher and a guide to, to that audience and hoping that audience of course grows. But <laughs> I feel like we have to be students all the time of yes. what we are teaching. Perennial. Correct. Mm -hmm. Like we actually are the students of what we came here to specifically teach. Right. And so I'm very vulnerable in this book. I don't think I've ever shared I know I haven't shared this mm -hmm. level of raw honesty mm -hmm. about my family, about mm -hmm. my relationship with my husband, mm -hmm. around my own 
body dysmorphia and, and eating disorders, my own scarcity, mm-hmm. my plant medicine journeys. Mm-hmm. Like I really lay it out on the table. And I don't assume to be better than anybody because I've now written a book about this. Mm-hmm. I really believe that all of us have, you know, essentially proverbially a book inside of us. Right. And we can all teach lessons based on what we've uniquely faced. So each chapter, although it's called The Light Work, mm-hmm. I have a very important section in the beginning of the book called, But First Let's Talk About the Dark. You went there first. A hundred percent. And um, I'll tell you this quick story. It was really inspired by Egypt. Mm-hmm. So we went to the Temple of Kom Obo, mm-hmm. which is from what I was told by my guides on the tour, the Temple of Neutrality. And on one side represents the dark and one side represents the light. And if you sit at the center, you can experience pure mm-hmm. neutrality. So I go to this temple, I stand in the center of it, I put one hand out to the right, I put one hand out to the left, I lean into the right and I feel, this was at the end of my burnout, my Mm -hmm. rageful scarcity, just terrible year. And all of the anger and guilt and shame, self-loathing I was carrying Mm -hmm. with me, Mm -hmm. got all of that, saw all of that, lean my left hand to the light side and I, all I saw was my little girl playing in her room. Wow. Like the, the pure innocence and joy. Wow. So we're done with this temple. We make a beeline back to our Diabea, you know, the mm-hmm. river boat we fly, yes, we, yes, we yes. sail down on the river. And I am so ready to write down all of this dark ish that I saw in that temple on my journal. I write it all down. I didn't want to lose it. And I'm like, rip it up, shred it, release it, throw it into the river. And so that's it just what I did and I was proud of myself uh-huh. and I threw it on over the over the railing I had a little balcony on my room on this riverboat and I sit back and I start to like breathe and just he- let the ritual settle right and I hear a voice I hear my higher self and she says to me Jessica these are not the pieces of you to rip, a, rip apart and discard these are the pieces of you to love mm, that's powerful that's real transformation. Yeah. I'll let you continue that. No, I, that, and, and that's the point that I make yeah. throughout this book and the message. It's our no, darkness is our way shower. It's a deep hole yeah. of darkness and um, void Yes, that represents infinite potential. Correct. You have to love it. You have to love it. You have it. to love every p- part of you. Yeah. Because if you do not, it separates and then it fights for attention, yes. and it comes up when you least expect it. Yes, you know, it it comes up and takes you over. Yes, rather than uh, integrating and becoming a dimension of your power. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And you and you said this in your foreword, mm-hmm. and I I reflect this throughout the whole book. You know, we don't we aren't one with the light. We are the light. We are the light. And darkness isn't bad. It's not the opposite of light. It's just. The way that the Palladians actually refer to light is information. Mm-hmm. Light is just information. When we mm-hmm. turn on the light, like you said in your your forward, we mm-hmm. can see. Yeah. When we turn off the light and we're in the dark, we can't see. Right. We're in a state of um, you know ignorance. We don't know the truth, the truth, the power right. of right. our own light in that state. And when we ignore it, it's when it becomes dangerous. Right. But if you learn or to suppress it, or, or suppress it, or try to drink it away, yeah. or, or whatever. throw it away, just yeah, yeah. rip it up yeah. and throw yeah, it in yeah, the yeah. river, right? And when we really learn to love our darkness, it sets us free, yeah. And we integrate it to become fully authentic, because when you know your own darkness, no one else can call you out on anything you don't know about yourself, right? 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 right. It sets you free. Yeah, In- integration is the great word, and what happens is, as you're describing this, many people are operating from a pretense of yeah. spirituality yes. because they're trying to sublimate all the places they don't like about themselves. Correct. So they're pretending to be something that they haven't integrated yet. Correct. So unless you love all of those spaces, which also includes forgiveness. Correct. You know, and not, you know, shaming kind of forgiveness, but just embracing, uh, then you're not your full self. Yeah. You know, you're not authentic. You're not, you know, you're kind of pretending to be yourself. And you're not fully healed. And you, yeah. So this, this is very good, this is good work. Yeah. And so when you think about all these people that are tuning in right now, what would you say you want them to get out of this book? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking some, some nice conversation. Yeah. This, is deep, this is deep stuff. Yeah, you know? totally. Yeah. God, that's such a big question. This is such a good question. You know, I, I guess what comes to me first is 
that I don't want any one person to read this book to take for granted how powerful, necessary, and needed they are right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this is like you could call it light worker, but I call it light warrior. Mm -hmm. That's good. This a, is, a warrior, not a warrior. Right, exactly. A warrior. <laughs> just like you got my name right phonetically, right? Swag, not swag. Swag. <laughs> swag. But swag. The, the warriorship requires courage. It requires a sense of sovereignty. It requires a sense of personal responsibility. Yeah. And I just think that this book gives you the roadmap on how to take back your your true power mm -hmm. you're not anointed power you're mm -hmm. innately born with it yes and same thing with your uniqueness and yes. love yes. and worth and this is really that guidebook to show you how to remember that like that's i actually wanted to title the book originally an invitation to unlock your infinite power and remember who you really are. But mm -hmm. my publisher thought it was a little too soft. He's like, this is an in invitation. This is a Indiana Jones. The second you start this book, you go. You go in. Which I, I loved and I, I tweak, tweaked the subtitle. But that was what I really picked up in Egypt mm -hmm. was how much I had forgotten mm. the truth of who I am as a, as a body on this planet. And we're not just awakening, Michael, and I'm sure you would agree with this. We're remembering. Yes. We're remembering our codes of consciousness. Yeah. And so what I would want the reader is to walk away being like, I, I, I remember. I remember. You've explored some dimensions of reality mm -hmm. and you're reminding people that what you've explored and integrated, everyone can do it. Yeah. And everyone must do it. Yes. Yeah. Because oftentimes people are, even when they become spiritual, mm -hmm. they still have the presence somewhere out there. Correct. The way we've been taught in particularly in Western society, even if you surrender to whatever you want to call it, God, life, source, whatever, you still put it out there somewhere. Yeah. You know, even if you have the the right language, God is within me. Yeah. You still have it out there. Yeah. And so ultimately we have to say that our life is the light Correct. of the presence. Yeah. And that there is a perfect idea of us that's incorruptible timeless ageless and forever that is our real self yes and so you're actually allowing your real self to emerge yeah Whew. that's right and that's courage and as you've already indicated you cannot uh walk as a victim and have that much power no you have to actually walk as a victor you have to actually hold that energy yeah yeah thank you for reflecting that that was beautiful yeah to sit here and receive I think my first one of the first chapters. There's a intro. There's a pre, there's a forward. Mm -hmm. Then there's an, a preface. Then there's the intro in the dark, and then we get to the first chapter. And the first chapter is called Source. Okay. Finding your way back. Yes. And finding your way back to what I say to you, because right. you are the source. That's right. I saw that. Yeah. And there's. <laughs> and, oh, she's got you, it. You know, and I I really I talk a lot about this in my my book as well, but. You know, I, I, I refer to transcendence, right, mm -hmm. versus imminence. Yes. Right? The imminence is the, the journey within to know that we are we yes. are the light, we are the source. But we can also transcend and mm -hmm. reach different dimensions and connect with all different sorts of information spirits. And it's a powerful thing to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people come to Agape, because mm -hmm. they want to they feel your energy and yeah. activations. But one of the things that I've learned specifically in the last couple of years on my spiritual path as it's gotten deeper is because I'm so good at transcending and I love hanging out up there with mm -hmm. my with mm -hmm. my extraterrestrial friends and my spirit mm -hmm. guides, it actually turned into a form of escapism. Mm -hmm. Good point. And I didn't want to root here down into this planet Gaia because it was painful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I remember those days. Of course, yeah. I know you do. We've talked about it on my show. Yeah. And to know that you can transcend and get out of here versus like go deep and know your own imminence, which is the human experience, Yes. which is holy. Yes. It's, it was a complete reframe for me to see that Gaia, of yeah. all the billions and trillions of planets that are in this universe, Gaia's a place to be. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it has every single stage of consciousness, yeah. all the way from the animalistic human, yes. all the way up to avatar consciousness and people who are absolutely integrated into the oneness. It's all here. It's all here. The whole, this playground has everything. Everything. You know, 
and you can get distracted. Mm -hmm. You can get lost. You can become a victim to it. You can it. become a victim. You can look into the mirror, you know, those crazy mirrors that you see in the yeah. music parts. And you think that's reality. Right. You know, you get distorted reality. And you can even fight for your distortion, mm -hmm. you know. People but as you're do. saying, you remember, you wake up, you remember, you wake up, and you remember. And the thing about not being a victim, as you're describing here, is we all chose to be here. Yes, we did. We chose to be. We didn't like, oops, yep. somebody pushed me. No, nope. <laughs> no, nope. this is no coincidence. <laughs> this right. is an assignment. Yeah, yeah. You, and like, we took it on. And we took it on. Yeah. And it's such an important and exciting, necessary, critical time yeah. to be alive in right. humanity. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest takeaways in the book that I hope people are like, wow, I am... I am needed. I'm not a bystander mm, I'm here. I'm needed. Yes. Yeah, I'm not a bystander. Yes. Now, do you do you feel that there are souls that have chosen to be here because they know mm. that this is a beautiful time, mm. uh, even though it seems dark, seems mm -hmm. clashy, that they wanted to be here at this time in human history? It's like mm, some things going on down there. I'm, I want to. I want to. It's going to be tough, but I'm going into. I'm going into the ripple of time. I'm going into the. Coagulation of energy. Do you you feel that? I do, and I I do, and yes, and yes, and no. Mm -hmm. I think, frankly, you know, I write about this as well. I have a whole glossary in the top of the book, mm -hmm. and defining these spiritual concepts, at least in my own terms. But I talk about star seeds, yeah, right, and that there are members, souls that come in from other parts of the universe that mm -hmm. are not of this sun star, right, right, that are here to seed a new consciousness, yeah, and I think that to some degree, some of those souls didn't really know what they were coming in for, mm. which is, I consider myself to be a star seed mm -hmm. for lots of reasons, but I, I, and I know a lot of people listening can probably relate, I didn't have the easiest childhood, yeah. right? I, I never really fit in. Right. I never belonged to a clique. Like mm -hmm. I didn't have a group of girls that accepted me. I was mm -hmm. kind of a little bit of an outcast and never felt like I belonged. <laughs> And I actually, I'm 42 years old. Mm -hmm. I just finally figured out where on the planet mm -hmm. I feel like I belong, which yeah. is in Nashville where I just moved. But I, to answer your question, I honestly think that a lot of the young, young, young children on this planet right now, mm -hmm. they're coming in with an assignment. They know. Yeah. They know. And what, they don't buy into a lot no. of the reality that people are in. Yeah. They don't, there's certain things they don't even seem to think that's important. Like Gen Z. Yeah. They don't think certain things are important. Correct. You know? They're redefining humanity right, right. now. They're co-creating a new earth, whether we like how they do they're doing it or not. Right, right. But I've spent some time, like I said, I'm not a mom, but I have a lot of girlfriends who are mm. moms and I'm around their children and they're so conscious. Yeah. They notice the moon. They, mm. they, are, they are able to conversate in ways that yeah. are beyond their time. Yeah. And I, so I think it's a both and yeah. where people are seeding, the souls are seeding this planet, whether by choice or, or by yeah. default. Or they're remembering. They're remembering their choice to be here. Correct. In, in, a, in a sense. Yeah, this, this is great. This is the light within, right? It is the light within. Yeah. I really want you to get this book because everything that we're talking about, she goes deeper into it in the book. Now, you've had a, an entrepreneurial journey as yes, well. I have. You know, and uh, tell us about that. You know, you, you're an entrepreneur. I mean, you sold a business. You, yeah. You started three businesses. Yeah. And, and you, uh, I said earlier before you came in here about how you're doing a lot of work with women. Yeah. Retreats, transformational retreats. You're really taking the opportunity to embrace the, the feminine. Correct. You know, and, and I think that, I always think that's important. I speak about this at Agape in terms of this energy is so necessary at this time in human history in order to really change the paradigm. Correct. Because the, the patriarchal vibration has dominated for so long that as I've taught, you know, we've normalized insanity. Correct. There's certain insane things going on. It's just normal. Mm -hmm. you know, let's go bomb some people. Let's just throw our waste in the ocean. Yes. This is wipe out the rainforest because we need to have more land for cows or something. We've just normalized insane things, but that's a whole masculine Correct. dominate, manipulation, and control. And you're here like really seeding women to, into their power, not to become men. No. We become, need men. We need the we healthy need, uh, masculine, we, we the divine healthy. masculine. Yes. You're talking about the toxic masculine. Yes, which absolutely. Which is the vibrational baseline that we're all swimming in. Like right. fish, we can't even see it. Right. It's normal to see that on the news and, and go about your day. And just go about our day. Right. So, oh, yeah, did you see what happened? Yeah, right. okay, let's, let's do this. I And I'm so happy that you brought this up because mm -hmm. this is, you know, one of my biggest passions and what I remembered, right? I 
mm-hmm. in the last however many years as I've become, you know, more successful with my businesses, which, yes. you know, you're very familiar with Simply Be. Yes, of course. We're helping you with your beautiful brand. I work with it. <laughs> it's our incredible client. <laughs> and, you know, I really feel like women, so let's actually talk about the patriarchy for a second, right? Yeah. So past 4,000-ish years, right? all recorded once we got stone tablets and were able to actually put things on paper to mm-hmm. reflect back on, call it history. 4,000 years compared to 4 billion years, which is how old this planet is. Mm-hmm. You date back to a couple hundred thousands of years when humanity really started to form. Mm-hmm. We lived in a matriarchal society. Yes, we did, yes. We worshiped the great mother. Yes. Everything was in harmony with her. She's the ultimate divine feminine. Right being leader co-creator and women led civilizations we were the top of those tribes yes and over the course of you know the last 4000 years as kind of women became known for our you know connection to herbs to the animals to the planet the seasons as the dawn of religion formed, and you would know this more than I would, and, and you know, civilizations of church and state were created, those women who had the codes, mm-hmm. they were called witches. Right. And that feminine frequency has not only become oppressed, repressed, it's actually become forgotten. Yes. And if women and I, I, I love men, right? I, I feel like we need this mm-hmm. is the yin, the yang, the harmony. We mm-hmm. need the we need them both, right? Mm-hmm. They serve the people, they serve each other. But women, if we were in charge, <laughs> if we were running countries and corporations and <laughs> pharmaceutical companies yes, yes, and yes, yes. food food industry and sports teams and yes. you know, we, it would be a different world. It just would be a different world. Oh, absolutely. And I'm really here with the convergence of my be- my business background and you know selling my business serial entrepreneur and what i know about branding and marketing and those hard skills and bringing this these spiritual understandings to women so that they can enact their own power because when women have power right women usually have money right and when women have both right this world's going to be a better place absolutely and that's what i'm here for right right they've shown that even in even in all of the uh, developing countries that when women get educated and they have power and they have money, and they have entrepreneurial skills, violence goes down. Absolutely. You know, the community, it grows, because that, that whole feminine energy embraces everyone, whereas the masculine energy sometimes divides. Correct. Into individualism. Correct. Whereas that feminine energy, we're, we're all part of a family. Yes. Whereas in that rough individualistic vibration, only these people are my family. Yes. You know, there's a sense of separation. So it's, it is necessary. This work that you're doing and the work that uh, people are doing to uplift the feminine energy mm-hmm. is absolutely necessary at this time in human history. You know. Hathor told me that. That's, that's what you got? Yeah. yeah. It's going back to Egypt. Yeah. Well, I, I died in Dendera. Yeah. Okay. And uh, huge light body activation, started hearing the Pleiadians, the Hathors just mm-hmm. speaking through me. And they told me, they said, the feminine frequency is here now. Right. And it's up to the women. It is. It's here now. And let's just be clear that the feminine isn't necessarily gender related. No, it's not right? gender. It's, it's energy. It's energy. Yeah. It's divine value. Yes. Because I think, you know, I, I often say that women who are in their masculine power mm-hmm. will help to lead mm-hmm. this world. And men who are in their feminine mm-hmm. hearts mm-hmm. will help to heal this world. Right. We need, we need both. We need both. And we are finding our power, but we're doing it in a way as women through this frequency of oneness and compassion and mm-hmm. community mm-hmm. and and harmony and reciprocity. Mm-hmm. You know, that those are the codes of Gaia. Yeah. And so I like that. I, I, I'm I'm here for the women rising. You remind me of two people right now. One's my mom. Oh. She was like that. You mm-hmm. know, I, she had me at nineteen and I watched her grow, you know, from a person that didn't even drive a car to driving. I watched her become this part of the civil rights movement. Mm. I watched her then become an, an entrepreneur. I watched her then become a leader uh, running uh, an office in Inglewood. I watched her whole development. And she always remained a very feminine person, but with a lot of power. Yeah. She didn't take no stuff. Mm-hmm. 
but she was very loving and very embracing of everyone. So she just comes to mind because it was a really good model. And my dad was very supportive too. So yeah. that was a great model as well. And then I'm thinking about my friend um, Maladoma Somme, who wrote the book of Water and the Spirit. He was a shaman out of West Africa. Wow. He was kidnapped as a young kid and taken by the Catholic priest. And they would, they would take the kids and change their mindsets and then send them back to the village. Mm. But he escaped. Wow. He got back, went through his initiation and you know became awake. When he was an adult, he went through an elder initiation and he had to put the mud on his body from the village and not bathe for 30 days. So, and he could hear and understand the language of the trees, the birds, the animals. And then Gaia spoke to him. Mother, Mother Earth said, I've already awakened and gone to the next frequency mm. and we're waiting for humanity to catch up. <sighs> Those who don't, it's going to be some very intense, anxious, anxiety-producing situation. But for those who come along, it's going to be an integration into a higher frequency. And he got that directly from Mama. Wow. You know. And, and we and we, those who are creating a new Earth. Yes. That's the new Earth rising. It's a co-creation of humanity. Yes. Of people who are getting those codes in whatever format they they might. But when we are asleep to that. Yes. Yes, it creates mass destruction and the rainforest and war, but it also creates so much disease in our own bodies. Our own body, absolutely. Mentally, emotionally, yes. physically. Yes. Yeah. And that was really what I, frankly, Michael, what I woke up to a few years ago because I was really, I was really good at playing the, the masculine hustle. Uh -huh. I made a lot of money doing it. Yeah. I, I won in that world. Yeah. The Matrix and I, we could hang out. <laughs> You know, but you developed skills to be in that, I in did. that frequency. It did. And I, I had kind of a, I don't want to say a dirty deal, but in a way I did. I was like, this world works for me. I like it. It's serving mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of ways it wasn't. I was suffering. It's when, you know, my, my nervous system was so fried yeah. from being that unrooted from Gaia. Yes. And when I say I made a kind of a dirty deal, I, you know, what, what happened once I came back from Egypt and I got back in my body and I rooted and I understood more of these codes, m my life changed. Mm -hmm. My life slowed down. Mm -hmm. Things weren't working for me in the same way they once were as I was getting into right relationship. Mm -hmm. And I've never felt more aligned, never felt more at peace, never felt more clear on you know, what I'm here to say and what I'm here to do. But the journey to get there was a little painful right. because we've all, whether consciously or unconsciously, kind of made these deals that like we, we like the way this works. We like the convenience of Amazon. And we like that we drive big, expensive cars that pollute the earth. And we, you know, those right. are the things that we are becoming, I, I would hope, more conscious around and how it's impacting not just the planet, but us at a very deep level. Yeah, I think it's slowly happening mm -hmm. because it it's in the culture now. It is. About the environment. I mean, the word environment, I think, is in the 70s when people start talking about the environment, mm -hmm. particularly after the um, people saw a picture of the earth. It did something to everybody's mass consciousness. I said, oh, we're all living on this big blue pearl. Yeah. You know, and there's no really borders there. There's no division. Yeah. It just shifted something. So the word environment came in, and then uh, ecological conversations began to happen. And then, as all of the indigenous people have already, already been saying, that we're one with this. Yes. We're not separate from the earth. No. You know, we've emerged as earthlings. Yes spiritual beings having an earthling experience, but we're one with mama. We are. We're sure. supposed to be stewards, not just strip mine it to death. Stewards, yeah. yeah. We have such a responsibility to her. Yeah, absolutely. I talk about a trip in my book to the Amazon when I went deep, deep, deep into the Ecuadorian basin. Yeah. It took me like a full day of b buses, planes, yeah. boats, hiking to get there. And I've never tapped into to pure on a abashed mother earth in my life yeah and the harmony of the frequencies of the masculine and the feminine that i felt there and just how not sad but unfortunate it is that to tap into that level of frequency it it takes a trip like that yeah you know we live in these yeah you're describing something beautiful because we're aware now that darwin had it wrong yeah because he talked about the survival of the fittest yeah but he was only researching like young teenage foliage. But when you step back, you see that when there's collaboration, mm -hmm. then there's flourishing. Mm -hmm. And so the survival of the fittest then became a part of the dominant masculine code. Correct. 
you know, I'm going to compete, I'm going to win, uh -huh. you know, I'm going to be a warrior, uh -huh. but the wrong kind of warrior, yep. and I'm going to dominate. But actually, it's the collaboration that ensures the evolution of the species. It's not competition. Correct. You know, so when you look at the governments of the world, they're run by egocentric men, and they want to compete. I want to be number one, you know, instead of I want to be one with the one. Right. They say, I want to be number one. Yeah. And so now we have destruction. Right. But what you saw in mm -hmm. the rainforest was a collaboration. Correct. Species, plants, trees, foliage. All working together. All working together. Yeah. That's the real. So Darwin had it off. Yep. You know, but he created a whole schism in consciousness. And, and you actually had a direct experience of that. Yeah. Yeah. What you're saying reminds me of something that the Palladians say, and I'm going to botch it, it's not verbatim, but when we all as a kind of mass society download mass information via television, right? Mass thought oh, forms yeah, are created. Yeah, yeah. And we're, this paradigm, this construct of survival yes. is driving everything. It is so deeply etched in our DNA and our lineages and our parents, 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 parents. It's like the, the fittest always won yeah, and yeah. we have to survive. Right. And it's, I believe that's really what the new earth is about, is dissolving that yes. paradigm. And knowing that we are one, you speak of oneness in mm -hmm. every thing that comes out of your mouth, mm -hmm. that this power of collaboration, right? Yes. This, that's the new sexy. That's the new sexy. Yeah, collaboration. And that we are safe. Yes, and we're safe. And we're safe. You're not gonna die. No, you're not gonna die. So you might as well live, not, not that you're not gonna leave the body, but you don't need to live with a whole bunch of fear about dying that you live in the survival vibration. Yeah. You're not gonna thrive that way. That's why you have people that have way more than enough but still living under the survival in instinct. Totally. And you then know? you have people who have barely anything and feel free say, and oh, safe God, and life abundant. Is, I love my family. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's amazing. Because yeah. when people are on their deathbed, they're not thinking, I gotta make one more deal. No, they're not. <laughs> I, got, I need one more billion, then I'm gonna be happy. Right. You no, know, they're thinking about, oh my God, I I didn't spend a lot of time with my family. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't really love with my whole heart. Mm -hmm. I didn't really share my gift. Yeah. I just survived and, and attained rather than circulated. Yeah. Circulated. So you've had a, quite a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, we covered a lot of material. I want just a few more moments. Um, just in your entrepreneurial vibration. Yeah. We keep getting off of that a little bit. I know, bit. I know. But you know, this stuff is juicy. I'm, it's juicy and it's so funny because I've but, done so many podcasts and everyone wants to talk business and I'm here for it, let's go. Yeah. But this has been such a gift to be able to talk about all the no, other No, but things. this is the real deal and people need to hear this. Yeah. You know, again, 40 years ago, we couldn't talk like this. Yep. I used to say that people would, 40 years ago, if they had a book on what they used to call the occult, you know, the mysteries, uh -huh. they would cover it up with a paper bag. Yeah because they didn't want anybody to see it. And if somebody were to say, what are you reading? They'd say, well, porn. <laughs> People would rather be- It's better than the occult. It's less offensive and no, scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking, what are you going to sit there with your eyes closed doing nothing, you know? <laughs> but now, you're coming out of the closet. Mm -hmm. I've said that a few weeks ago at Agape. It's like, I want people to come out of the closet yeah. with their experiences, with their insights, with their dreams, with all those things that we push to the side. That's the real deal. That is the real deal. You know? I left my body and I had this great experience. Yeah, talk about that. Yep. You know, dissect that, uh, research that. What did that mean? What information were you getting? Because as you just said, that information is more real than what you're getting on the television. Yes, it is. Because that's just a little curated, little tiny sliver. Produced by the yeah. Matrix. Produced by the <laughs> Matrix. And people actually believe that stuff. That, exactly. So that's what's... I saw it on TV. Oh, no. Must be true. <laughs> I mean, when I was growing up, my dad, you know, he'd have us at the dinner table with my brother. And my brother would say something. And he'd say, where, where, did you, where did you hear that? Oh, I saw it on the news. I read the newspaper. And he said, and my father would always make a big point on the fact that just because you read it in the newspaper or see it on television, that doesn't mean it's real. That's perhaps somebody's opinion. Correct or someone's agenda. So we were taught at a very young age to look at it, and then ultimately to look through it. Yes. So you're not being hijacked by somebody else's point of view. It's such a powerful yeah. frame to have at such a and, young age. And he would amazing. quiz us. Well, how do you know that's true? Yeah. How do you know that's true? How do you know it's true? How, did you do any research? Did you read the book? Did you go into the library? Yeah. You know, And my brother would be like, oh, no, Dad. <laughs> you know, I didn't say nothing. You know? Nope. I'm not saying nothing because, you know. That's yeah. an important reminder for all of us that yeah. are glued to social media these days yeah, and no. see the 
the memes and the headlines. It's, yeah. Do you know it's true? Yeah. But how does it feel, you know, when you, you know, founder of Simply Be, which is a great, great avenue of um, personal branding and more, really allowing people to get into their their dream and to articulate it and to help bring it into manifestation. Yeah. So when you knew, first of all, that was a very successful business. And then the opportunity came for you to sell it and yeah. still be a part of it, obviously. Yeah. What happened inside of you when this opportunity came up and then you finally sold it? Yeah. I mean, what, what changes did you go through? This so is your baby. It is my baby. Seven years. Yeah. What do they say? Okay. Every seven years, you have brand new cells yeah. and hair right. fall. Like, you literally right. are a new person every seven years. So I sold my business seven years to the day I opened the doors. Wow. It's kind of crazy. You know, I, I set the intention with my company, the Simply Be Agency, with the vision and the mission statement that when you set yourself free to simply be, you set the world free. Mm -hmm. You give other people the permission to do the same. Right. And I took my background in marketing, branding, social media, and PR and applied those hard skills to that mission. Mm -hmm. And the agency just took off. It went from one person to five people to 25 people in a very short amount of time. Wrote a book, my first book, B, it was a number one bestseller mm -hmm. and you know, kind of gave the world the, the roadmap to build their own personal brand. So thousands and thousands of people have now been sort of touched by the methodology. And I got, it really, really, truly came back to my burnout in Egypt and mm -hmm. I kind of slowed down and I got really clear that I was unhooking from the toxic masculine hamster wheel. And I'd always in the back of my mind dreamed of selling my business, like mm -hmm. who does, what entrepreneur doesn't dream of that? But I realized, you know, I had done it. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have anything left to prove. Mm -hmm. I talk a lot about my relationship with my dad and my book and how that relationship really I sp I've spent my whole life trying to make my father proud of me, yes. you know, based on that trauma. Yes. But my team, you know them well. Yes. We're the best in the business. We're a well-oiled machine. We operate flawlessly. Our clients are succeeding. My team mm. and culture is thriving. That's what I mean when I say I had nothing left to, to prove. It, it, was, it was bigger than me. Mm -hmm. It had, excuse me, scaled beyond anything that I mm -hmm. had ever really imagined. And this company, Hawk Media, came mm. knocking on my door in the middle of 23. I had just written this book. Mm -hmm. I had channeled that book in three months. Mm -hmm. I had hosted some really powerful and successful retreats for, for female entrepreneurs. And I really, I've always, you know, I've been reading your books for years, mm. right? I've, I've always been deeply connected to the spiritual space. And I felt like I had something new to say and really share and mm -hmm. and do with my mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And so the divine timing truly aligned mm. so that when this company came knocking and their deal was good mm -hmm. and I had sort of felt like I, I was complete, mm -hmm. but I didn't want my business to go away. Right. And I still wanted my team to stay intact right. and I wanted to still be in, involved, involved to work in on my clients that I love. Mm -hmm. It all checked the boxes. You got all of that. It, I did, right. and you know, so far so good. Right, you know, right, right. it's been a few months, but right. it's given me the space and the capacity to really, I think, share my true message in the world, which is the light work. Wow, that's beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. I remember when you told us. Yeah, I remember. I wanted to tell you in person. <laughs> yeah, we were here in LA a few weeks ago. I was like, right. well, we were calling all of our clients to mm -hmm. like inform them, and I'm like, I'm gonna sit down with Michael and Lee and share with them at lunch. And you were so genuinely happy for me oh, and you know working with you and being uh, able to build your brand and help refine your website and your podcast and social like it's a very full circle moment for me to call you a client yes and also to be here on your podcast right right that is powerful and for you to have written the forward to my book yeah uh, yeah it's destined to be destined to be mm -hmm. and for those <laughs> listening that know michael obviously way better than me your forward your forward is codes. Mm. It's every oh, you word know, break, is an activation. Yeah, okay. I want you to break down codes for them. Codes? We talk about that, <laughs> you and I. But, but I wanted the people, when you say there's codes there, what is, I wanted them to know what that means. <laughs> I mean, so I, like I said, back to, I don't know, back to DNA, and I'm not a scientist, yeah, but yeah, right. we are technology. We're sacred technology. We're not just flesh, bone, and skin, mm -hmm. fluids. We're, we're light. Yes. And when we have, say, holy experiences like stepping into a temple or we do a breath work session or we go to Michael Be Beckwith's agape service or we read something in a book mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or we go to a sound bath and hear sounds and, and we feel something shift and change and come alive mm -hmm. in us, 
Mm-hmm. I'm getting activated right now. <laughs> <laughs> we are being recoded. Yeah. We, our codes are, co- we're like computers, right? There, there's new codes coming online yeah. so that we are more awake. Yes. And that is really what I hope my whole book is for people, codes, but mm-hmm. you open, you commence it mm. with that forward. And it is truly an activation and an invitation to experience light in a whole new way. And you set the tone for that, Michael, and I really want to thank you again for mm. writing it. Thank you for asking me, and the book is worthy. Mm. It, everything that we're talking about here is just touching a little bit of what's contained within the book. She, she's giving you a frequency and a vibration of what she went through, her own growth, development, and unfoldment, to be able to write the book. So the book carries a frequency that when you, you read it, it's not just information that informs, it's information that transforms. Mm. This is beautiful. So make sure that you pre order and get your copy. And oftentimes I don't really do that on the podcast, like sell stuff, books and stuff, but I will have authors on. But I want you to I want you to get this book. Because as Mary Ann Williamson said, she is she's a great voice for our time. Mm. The whole feminine rising and it's not woo woo, it's not just popular to say that. She's really an example of that. And uh, so I want I want you to get it. Any last words? <laughs> Just deep bow of gratitude. And thank you. I received that. Receiving, this is one last thing I will yeah, say please. For, for you know, for people listening, but especially to my women listening. Receptivity, yes. I think, is one of the, the biggest flexes of the feminine, the being mm. the receptacle, yes, right? Yes. There's, that's why there's a downward facing triangle throughout yes. the whole book, like the womb, right? Yes. And knowing that you don't have to do anything to to be powerful and to magnetize. It is your being that no, does say that. Say that again. I want you to hear this. You don't have to. You don't have to do, do anything, anything to be powerful. And simply mag- be. Yes, you, are si- you simply <laughs> be in that essence, and yes. you are, you are the magnet. And on the topic of receiving, because you just said such beautiful things about me and my book, one of the biggest life hacks, true life changing practices, mm-hmm. when we get a compliment, mm-hmm. you know, when someone tells us we're beautiful, or mm-hmm. oh that was such a great job you did, or I love your bag, mm-hmm. or you you know I loved your work, right. We are so quick to deflect. That's right. Oh, no, you, I love your bag. Yeah. Oh, my hair looks like crap today. What do you mean? Right. Oh, I, I didn't really think that was that great. Right. When we stop that and we literally practice this, I'm going to break it down for you. It's super simple. When someone right. says something kind to you, you, put your hand on your heart, mm-hmm. you look that person in the eye, and you just say, thank you. Thank you. I received I that. Received that. Yeah. That'll change your life. Absolutely. If we can't receive a compliment, how are we going to receive all of the things we're calling in. You know, when I learned that, le- not when I learned the lesson, but when that lesson was amplified in my life, this is a number of years ago, I traveled to Africa, and I was in a Senegal. Mm. And in a very colorful, a very colorful dressing. And we would say to the, the ladies there, wow, that's beautiful. And they would say, it's true, thank you. <laughs> I love it. It was like, it was oh, like, I a, love that. it was a culture shock for a second, you know? <laughs> that's beautiful. It's true, true thank, thank you. you. And it just changed our whole vibration. Vibration. We got back to the States. It was like, as you're saying, we all just grew in this vibration of, that's true, thank Thank you. you. That that is a nice sweater. Yeah. You know, I I was just up in uh, uh, town the other way, and I had a a vintage sweater on that I picked up. And people were saying, this is a beautiful sweater. And I said, it's true, thank Thank you. you. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't have bought it if it was. I didn't like it. (laughs) Right, exactly. But exactly what you're saying is very powerful. Yeah. We have to learn to receive. We have to learn to receive. Uh, Yeah. That's the ultimate from survival to safety to simply receiving. Right. That's right. That's the true flex. Sometimes I tell people, the spirit, the universe has given you everything. Be gracious enough to receive it. Yeah. Don't don't leave him holding. Right. Don't leave her just right. holding there. You right. got to receive it. You got to be grateful. You got to be. Yeah. It's true. Thank you. I'm available. Mm-hmm. Jessica, thank you so much for being Michael. with me on Take Back Your Mind. It's an honor. Yes. I love you. I love you too. Hey everyone, Bye. this is her. <laughs> thank you. The light work, and she is a light worker, mm-hmm. and a light warrior. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings, everyone. I'm, I'm smiling because there's a smile inside of me. 
It's radiating out. And I want to invite you into your inner smile. This is our moment of meditation, which is valuable and important. The series is called, and the podcast is called Take Back Your Mind, because your mind is always seeking to be programmed by other people. That's why they call it programming. You turn on television, it's programming. You go to social media, it's programming. You want to program your own mind. So in meditation, you're opening yourself up not to be programmed by the world, but you're opening yourself up to catch the broadcast from the eternal presence. You perhaps heard Jessica talk about the fact that she'd be catching messages from the Palladians, caught messages from Hathor when she was in Egypt. What does that mean? You have ears, you see. Now, you don't hear because you have ears. You have ears because you hear. You have eyes. You don't see because you have eyes. You have eyes because you see. Form follows consciousness. So there is a spiritual faculty of sight and there's a spiritual faculty of hearing that came before the ears and the eyes. So in meditation, you're paying attention to the fact that you are a spiritual being first, which is why sometimes I'll say this is the first eye, not the third eye, because you're a spiritual being first. And then these two eyes, you know, are the second eyes. So we're gonna close our physical eye now. You're gonna tap the space between the eyebrows. This as a reminder, as you say to yourself, I can see without physical eyes. I can see the invisible. You're gonna just put your hand on your ears and you're gonna say, I can hear the inaudible. I can hear the inaudible. So we're becoming aware that we're not physical beings. We are spiritual beings that have spiritual faculties and that we can hear the eternal broadcast of life saying, let there be life, let there be beauty, let there be light everywhere. And we can begin to see the beauty that's everywhere, sometimes obscured by our thought forms of separation. Turn within. Begin to feel into the inner eye before the physical eye, the inner ear before the physical ear, and the heart behind the heart. Say, I can see the invisible. Say, I can hear the inaudible. I am pure awareness. body, any sounds that may occur, we do not label them noise, they're just sounds, and they're in our field of awareness, we are pure awareness, nothing can disturb us, we're available to see the invisible and hear the inaudible, to see the beauty, 
hear the eternal broadcast of Let There Be Light and Love everywhere. even aware that the body is breathing, allowing you to be very present with you. Stillness, silence, sacred solitude. Expanding your awareness of that which is real and eternal. It is from this place we can declare and decree that every single thing is working together for our individual and for our collective good. And it's all happening now. We give thanks for this and we allow it to be. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for participating in a moment of meditation. You have just reset your life back to the original awareness of life that you are. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I appreciate your letters and emails that you've been sending in, but also the notes you're sending on the Instagram and on the website thanking me for Take Back Your Mind. And I thank you for your support. As I've said before, if you want to support Take Back Your Mind, support the sponsors. The main sponsor is the Agape International Spiritual Center, agapelive.com. We have a Facebook presentation, an Instagram presentation, a YouTube presentation, and a website presentation. You can donate to the sponsor at agapelive.com. It's one way that you can donate. It supports the podcast. Second sponsor is Nutrarise.com. You go to Nutrarise.com, those three lines up at the top, you touch that line and you'll get Adapt-Zen. Adapt-Zen are my products. The Super Green, Superfood Greens, and the Vitamin D3, K2. Both extremely good for your health, your nutrition. You support the sponsors, you're supporting the podcast. Have a beautiful, and as I like to say, a bright day, luminous day, because you are a luminous being. Peace and blessings. Your time is very valuable, so I want to thank you for lending us your ear and participating in taking back your mind. If you want to submit a question for the question of the week, please submit it to podcast at michaelbeckwith.com. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, 
please submit a review and let us know your thoughts. Stay on top of current episodes by subscribing to the podcast so that you'll receive alerts and not miss one single episode. And feel free to share this podcast with all of your friends and family. And until we meet again, take back your mind and you will take back your life. Peace and blessings.